All right, what's going on, Giants fans? Episode 4, Hard Knocks offseason with the New York Football Giants has just ended. A lot to break down and uncover. Let's get right into it. The episode had started with Giants general manager Joe Shane in his office speaking with Chris Mara, um, discussing the conversation he had recently with Daniel Jones, uh, explaining to Daniel that, listen, offseason's coming up. We're leading up to the draft leading up to player interviews, prospect interviews. We're going to be bringing guys in. Uh, we're going to be going out to their pro days. We're going to be taking a look at some quarterbacks. I don't want your head in the clouds. I don't want you worried about what we're doing. We're just doing our due diligence. We're just doing what every other NFL team does, even when they have a franchise quarterback locked up, and even when they don't. They look at everybody, especially the quarterback position. He's explaining then to Daniel, look, like we still believe in you. I gave you that contract. I would not have given you that money if I did not believe that you were the guy to lead us. But that's, you know, let's be let's paint a realistic picture here. You have missed the 17 games in the last three years. Uh, you had a serious neck injury, and now you're coming off a torn ACL. Um, we we believe in you, but I mean, it would be a dissatisfaction to the fans, to the front office, to the organization if we did not do our due diligence by scouting everything um, we can in these quarterback prospects. Um, and that's how it kicked off. Then they showed about how scouts, how busy they are in these months uh, leading up to the draft. They're at pro days. They're traveling on a private jet to Alabama, to Tennessee, back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, to Penn State. Um, they were at a Penn State pro day scouting Theo Johnson, the tight end that they took in the draft. Um, it had just occurred. Barkley did sign with the Eagles right before this. A giant scout notices Saquon is over on the other side of the field. Um, telling him how much, you know, the guy he's talking to, how much he loves Saquon. Um, felt like he was a, a son to him because, they you know, they were scouting him when he was a college student. Drafting him, had him for five years, um, and just really liked him as a person. Then they show a clip of uh, Giants' new offensive line coach, Carmen Brasillo, having a conversation with Saquon Barkley. Um, and Saquon was still kind of interested to see what the Giants were doing. He noticed that they did sign Eliminor from the Raiders, who uh, Carmen Brasillo said he was like a son to him. He's one of those guys that he just goes up to him every day saying, listen, man, I love you. Let's go, let's go to work. Um, he then, Saquon Barkley said, hey, I saw you sign John Runyon. Uh, I like him. He's pretty good. And the guy's like, yeah, I think we're going to do well with uh, those two guys. Um, so, again, I guess Saquon, at the little piece of him, still misses – Big Blue. Um, LSU Pro Day, Dayball and Joe Shane went to LSU to watch Jaden Daniels and wide receiver Malik Neighbors take a part in their Pro Day. Dayball fucking loves Neighbors. <laughs> I mean, he, he was there. He's like, dude, this kid is a fucking stud. I love him. They did then show, which I thought this was a little weird, they brought in Neighbors, Odunze, and Harrison Jr. in for a visit at the Giants facility. All three of them. Same time, same room, breaking down film, drawing up plays. Um, kind of interested to see why they brought in all three at the same time. And then, of course, they each had their separate interview with them. Dable, again, just juicing with, just flowing with juice um, that he loved neighbors so much. Um, then they were interviewing quarterback scouts. Um, and I noticed a scout far in the picture uh, shown he was timing uh, the amount of time it took Drake May to, to draw up a play and break it down, something as little as that that you really it kind of goes unnoticed. You don't even think. And if I was a scout, I wouldn't have even think to do something like that. But I mean, they really pull back all the layers when it comes to scouting these guys, um, and they take their time and they just they get to work. Um, so shout out to the scouts. You got a big job, an important job, and a very hard job. Um, Dayball brought in Dan Jaden Daniels for his interview, and he immediately, before Jaden could even sit down, he said, let's cut to the bullshit. Let's get this right to the straight. Uh, do you want to be the quarterback for the New York Football Giants? And Jaden Daniels says, hell yeah, man, like hell yes. Um, so it seemed like Dayball, out of all the quarterbacks, Dayball really liked um, Jaden Daniels the most, especially then after all the player interviews. You had about a couple hours leading up to the draft. Joe Shane brings all his scouts, all his brain trust in their room with him, along with Brian Dayball. Um, and he asked, does anyone want to trade up for Jaden Daniels? Dabes, what do you think? And Dayball said, we're astounding. An astounding, yes, I would. Um, so you could kind of tell that he really was uh, involved and interested in drafting Jaden Daniels. Um, then I kind of viewed that, try to view that from the point of eye of Daniel Jones, point of view of Daniel Jones, 
and you see this, if you're watching this, Daniel, and you see that that, uh, that scenario, that conversation go down between Dayball, uh, your head coach, and Jaden Daniels, you kind of want to think like, A, do they really believe in me? Do they even want me here? Or B, I need to put in that fucking work, get to work, and show them that I can be the guy. Um, so, if Daniel Jones, if you're a true competitor, and this shit makes your, your blood boil, it puts a chip on your shoulder, let's get to work this year, okay? Um, people ask Daniel, Daniel, Daniel Daniels if you want to be the Giants quarterback. Um, John Mara asked Giants wide receiver coach after the three-headed wide receiver monster interview uh, concluded. He asked wide receiver coach Mike Rowe, um, out of those three players that you just had spent time with, who would you take? And he, with a astounding right away, Malik Neighbors. Um, Mara, very nervous before the draft. He was trying to knock on Joe Shane's door to see if he was there. <laughs> Assistant General Manager Brandon Brown kind of sees him in the hallway. He begins to have a discussion with John Mara. Um, Mara expressing how nervous he was uh, about this draft, especially with the quarterback situation, and then being in striking distance to obtain a quarterback if they choose to do so. Um, Brandon Brown asked him, how was it 20 years ago on this day when they traded for uh, Eli Manning? And he said what really sold him on the trade for Eli Manning, even though it was giving up quite a lot of picks to do so, uh, he Ernie Acorsi, he was dead on about drafting this kid. He knew from the get-go, this guy is a gamer. He is going to be the next franchise star for the Giants, and he's going to win you a Super Bowl too. Uh, and he was right. Um, what sold Mara, Brandon Brown asked Mara, what sold you between Eli over Big Ben? And Mara said the reason why they were all in favor of Eli, not just has to do with Peyton Manning and Archie, but Eli played in the SEC on a bad Ole Miss team for his, throughout his collegiate career. And with little to no help on talent-wise, he kept getting up, kept getting hit, kept getting up, and kept winning and kept producing. Big Ben played for Miami of Ohio in a much weaker conference. Um, yet Big Ben Roethlisberger did go on to win two Super Bowls of his own. Um, so really, both choices could have been good for us. Uh, but I'm happy they went with Eli Manning. Right before the draft, it was bring your child to work day. Joe Shane asked his son, his daughter, and his little girl, Harper, who he should draft his son with an astounding Jaden Daniels, then said Drake May, then said Marvin Harrison, then said Neighbors. He said pretty much you can't go wrong with either of those guys. His daughter then goes, I want you to draft J.J. McCarthy because he's cute. Typical girl answer. Um, it makes me say, does anyone like Daniel Jones in the, show, in the Shane family? Kind of makes you wonder. Again, if I was Daniel Jones watching this, I would have to turn it off because I would be very insecure right now. Um... Right before the draft, once his family goes home, Sean is seen doing this in his office. I mean, you could tell he is nervous. This is a very important draft for him. Third year in, him and Dayball. I mean, it's only been one good year with a playoff victory. The last two years, not so good. This year needs to be a turnaround. He knows it. We know it. John Mayer knows it. Um, he looks very nervous leading up to the hours before the draft. Seen in his office, closing his eyes, covering his face with hoodie. Uh, then John Mara comes in saying uh, to Shane that he's having heart palpitations at the uh, possibility of trading up for a quarterback, uh, expressing that even though it could be a good idea, he really doesn't want to risk all that draft capital uh, just for a quarterback. Um, so uh, nonetheless, Mara giving his input, like shown is not already have enough on his plate. John Mara needs to add his heart palpitations that he is in a fib, uh, on his plate as well. Um, right after, right four hours before leading up to the draft, Joe Shane calls patch GM. If they still want to trade the pick, new England expressed that they like to stay put unless the giants offered him something crazy, like a one, two, three this year and a one, two next year. Shown says, all right, that's it. We're going to roll the dice with Jones. And get him a weapon. Through another three hours before the draft, they were not moving up. He knew that three hours before the draft. So, cue this speculation. We were all sitting there, five minutes left in the draft before our pick, thinking we were going to trade up. The Giants knew three hours before the draft that that was not going to happen. Um, he brought in Joe Sh uh, John Mara, uh, Brian Dayball, and Steve Tisch, the other co-owner, in to their office with a presentation, a Google slide. Uh, expressing what their plan is at the draft, expressing that, listen, we're probably not going to move up for a quarterback. If Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors are both available at six, we're going to turn our card in. If they're both gone, 
We're likely going to try to field calls and maybe possibly trade back. John Mara made an input. Well, I mean, I don't, wouldn't be so sure the Chargers taking Joe Alt. They do need a receiver. Very good, John. Very good. You're listening and you're watching. Steve Tisch looked at the presentation and like, he kind of looked lost, uh, had no idea what was going on. He's the money guy. He's not the football guy. Uh, but it was pretty funny seeing his expression. Um, one hour before the draft, showed in, like I said, they meet with the owners. They present their case. Um, interesting draft. Interesting video episode. Um, next episode, again, they will eventually go into uh, the entire draft. Um, but just a very... Very good episode. The process it takes to, you know, go to Pro Day's scout. Um, and I saw they had a scout take a picture before the draft in the draft room. Um, and someone commented, hey, man, like, these are the guys that put the blood, sweat, and tears in each day during the season and off season, scouting these guys, traveling away from families and friends, doing this every day. It's a grind for sure. Um, and, you know, some of them turn out to be GMs. Uh, Joe Shane was a scout. He started as a scout. A lot of these guys start out as scouts and they become GMs. So maybe we'll have a GM in the wing. Who knows? Um, but that is 11 minutes too long. I apologize. Thank you for watching and listening. Um, if you have not seen the episode, go check it out. And then come back here and, and comment. Um, let me know your thoughts, though, on the ones that have seen the episode. What did you think about it? Episode 4 is over. Let's go, Giants. Talk to you guys later.